Hi, I'm David Barton of Wall Builders, an organization dedicated to presenting America's forgotten history and heroes with an emphasis on our moral, religious, and constitutional foundations. We have here a library of some 100,000 originals or copies of original documents, such as these items related to the 1953 inauguration of President Dwight D. Eisenhower. Dwight Eisenhower was a five-star general in World War II. He was the supreme commander of Allied forces in Europe. He oversaw the invasion of North Africa in 1942 and 1943, and then of France in 1944 through operations such as D-Day, and then invaded Germany in 1944 and 1945, and he thus brought the war in Europe to an end. After the war, he became the first commander of NATO, and then he served as president of Columbia University. Well, in 1952, there was a massive nationwide grassroots effort to recruit him to run for president. He finally agreed, and he won the election in a landslide. The massive public support behind it produced the largest inaugural crowd in presidential history. In this book, Mandate for Change, which he wrote after he left office, he describes some of his Inauguration Day activities. For example, he reports that, quote, I went with my family to a communion service early on the morning of Inauguration Day. And then in preparing for his inaugural address, he said that, quote, Religion was one of the thoughts I had been mulling over for several weeks. I was seeking a way to point out that we were getting too secular. Thinking on this, as we came back from church, I decided to write a brief prayer to read before my inaugural address. Well, here is that actual, original, handwritten prayer that Eisenhower himself composed and which he prayed at his own inauguration. In fact, you can watch the news clip of him delivering this prayer. My friends, uh, before I begin the expression of those thoughts that I deem appropriate uh, to this moment, would you permit me the privilege of uttering a little private prayer of my own? And I ask that you bow your heads. Almighty God, as we stand here at this moment, my associates in the, my future associates in the executive branch of government Join me in beseeching that thou wilt make full and complete our dedication to the service of the people in this throng and their fellow citizens everywhere. Give us, we pray, the power to discern clearly right from wrong and allow all our words and actions to be governed thereby and by the laws of this land. Especially we pray that our concern shall be for all the people, regardless of station, race, or calling. May cooperation be permitted and be the mutual aim of those who, under the concepts of our Constitution, hold to differing political faiths, so that all may work for the good of our beloved country and thy glory. Amen. On that day, the Washington Post reported that this little prayer, as he'd called it, caught the press corps completely by surprise. They explained. Then he, that is Eisenhower, adjusted his horn-rimmed glasses and began to speak. The words that came were not those expected by the reporters in the press section below. All of them had texts of his inaugural address and were prepared to hear him start reading it. Instead, he started out by saying, I have a little prayer of my own, and I want you all to bow your heads. There was complete silence in the great concourse of people as the chief executive read his little prayer. Following his inauguration, this beautiful illuminated engraving of his inaugural prayer was prepared. Now, not many of these were printed, and they had a special purpose. What was that purpose? Well, here at the bottom of this remarkable piece it says, quote, This illuminated engraving of the prayer, framed with wood from the inaugural platform, is an Achievement Award for Patriotic Service in the United States Savings Bond Program. Now, savings bonds, also known as Liberty Bonds and Defense Bonds and War Bonds, they were issued by the government to allow the public to help fund military and defense operations during World War I and World War II, and they also continue to be an important source of national defense funding in the years afterwards. So, this prayer was given as an award for patriotic service in this government program? I wonder if the U.S. government today would give out a prayer as a reward for patriotic service. These items certainly tell us much about America's religious heritage and just how far from it we've moved in recent years. 
We have these documents and scores of others like them posted on our website at www.wallbuilders.com. And if you want to support Wall Builders' efforts to restore this forgotten history and to preserve our moral, religious, and constitutional heritage, you can help at www.wallbuilders.com. God bless.